Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome to another garden tour. I was just passing by these peas here, and even though I picked them all yesterday, I see a bunch here that I missed. So I've just been grabbing those. I'll probably have to, oh yeah, I'll come back out here later <laughs> and get the rest of them. I already have a very small handful, but there's so many new things happening in the garden right now. We have a bunch of changes. I know in the last tour, I said that there was a ton of stuff blooming. We have a bunch of flowers that are coming in and growing really beautifully. We have other things that are on their way out. And it's just been a lot of transition of replacing our winter spring stuff with now our summer stuff. So I'm really excited to show you all of the things that we've just been kind of like working on and swapping out. Now it has been about two weeks since the last garden tour. And originally what I really wanted to do this year was to have a garden tour for every single week in spring, summer, and fall. And now that we've gotten into this, I know that that's just, that was just too ambitious for me. <laughs> I was trying to do two videos a week because I also wanted to kind of like document the projects and stuff that we have going on too. And now with getting into the swing of things, I know that I just don't have time for both. So this is gonna be transitioning a little bit from what I had intended and that's okay. Um, what I'm doing now, instead of trying to do a garden tour every week, it's probably gonna be every couple weeks. I'm gonna mix it in with different project videos and show you kind of how we're doing things and uh, just all the different transitions that are happening in the garden right now. So I just wanted to update you on that really quick. If you have been following along with us so far, I really appreciate you being here. And I just wanted to let you know that things are changing and that's why. Now, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Kira. Feel free to call me Q. And I'm really excited for you to join me in my garden. So let's start at our usual spot. So up on our patio, we have some green stock towers. I love these things. This is our strawberry green stock tower and I supplemented in with a few petunias on this one. You want to follow along with filling it out originally with the strawberries, all the different things that we did, and then kind of like putting in the petunias afterwards a couple weeks ago. So there's videos on both of those things that I will link below, but it's doing really well. Let's see, here's a good example. So as you can see, the strawberries are really happy these plants are getting huge. This one was, this is a sequoia. So this is, I think one of the June bearing ones. Yeah, this is a June bearing. This was one of the original ones we put in here about a month ago, I wanna say. And you can see that there's flowers, soon to be strawberries. This is one of the ones that we just put in a couple weeks ago when we did the petunias. And it's doing really well too. The petunias I've been pretty good about deadheading and so they don't have as many blooms on them right now and that's okay like they're coming in with more you can see here there are going to be more blooms on this soon but these are also a lot bigger than they were when we planted them so overall I'm really happy with this and here is our blackberry hedge love this thing it's super low maintenance and we're starting to get flowers which will turn into blackberries there's flowers all over this thing i don't know if you can see them all but there's little buds everywhere and then this is our second green stalk this one has nasturtiums petunias and then random cool weather things that have just been in here for a while and then it has a few empty pockets still this one gets a lot more shade so i've noticed that a lot of the flowers have actually stopped blooming as much as the other one I don't think there's any like active flowers on this one right now, even though the plants are healthy. So, oh, here's one, here's one little guy trying to come up. So I wanted to have this over here as an experiment to see if it would do well. And overall, I think it is doing okay, but I really would love the flowers. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy over to the same spot as the other one. Here on the side of our house, we have this herb bed that we put in and it's doing really well. We have a bunch of green onion here. This is a project that I've talked about on the last few tours and we just haven't gotten to it yet. So we do plan to take some of this green onion out and move it to our back garden in the what we call the perennial loop area. Uh, we have some sage here that is doing really well and you can see it's starting to flower. There's really pretty purple flowers. This one's never flowered before, so I'm really excited 
for this. I think it's beautiful. We have some calendula here that I added in just for extra color over the winter time. And it's about ready to take these guys out. Uh, we have a rosemary back over in this corner. And I think that's most of what's in here right now. So yeah, it needs some, some just cleanup. I mean, we probably could do with separating the sage plant now that it's so big and popping parts of it somewhere else. Oh, and then there's a little thyme over here in the corner. We take stuff out of here almost every time we cook and we really enjoy having it. Here's a little overhead view of all the things we talked about. Rosemary's back there, really full bed. This is just, it looks amazing and it smells amazing. It feels amazing too. Yeah. Sage is pretty cool. And then these are the flowers. Next up on the tour, we have two fruit trees here right next to each other. And so this one is an apricot tree. It's doing pretty well. It has a lot of fruit on it. We still do need to come out here and see like right here, there's still more thinning to do. So I'm gonna take one of those off because they're, oh, that took both of them off. <laughs> Oops. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Uh, but yeah, so it has a lot of fruit. We thinned most of it, but this tree has gotten so big this year that it is coming all the way out here. And then it's pretty much touching the ground over here, which is pretty wild. And so we think what we want to do is kind of do some trimming of these branches next year, just so that they're not too, too heavy because they're, I mean, they're way bigger. I think then this trunk can really s support well. And we would like to be able to kind of get under here and not have a full dome canopy. That is the apricot there. And then this is our peach tree. This is our poor little baby. So this thing has leaf curl. It got it last year and we've been trying to save it a little bit. So you can see some of these leaves are pretty like damaged. But there's a lot more green leaves on here actually than there were last year. There's a lot of blank spaces too where these branches don't have anything on them and we'll come in and trim those off. But I do think, I'm hopeful now. I mean, it still looks pretty rough, but there's so much more green than there was. And then just continuing down the line, here is our grape arch. It is full and lovely and also covered in grapes now. It's on all three vines and they're just everywhere. So all of these are gonna turn into red seedless grapes in a couple months here. So that'd be pretty fun. Last year, this thing was covered in fruit too and we actually ended up not harvesting any of the fruit off of this hardly. I think we got like a couple bunches for fresh eating because these grapes were ready at the same time as our baby was born. And so we got him home from the hospital and basically it was just like survival mode. And we harvested from the garden what we could. A lot of it we had, we gave away to friends. A lot of it, frankly, we just left in these grapes because they required so much processing time for us to do what we wanted to do with them. We wanted to make some jelly because we didn't have the bandwidth to do that with a brand new baby, we just left them all. So I am really excited to see what we can do with this this year because we just couldn't last year. Speaking of bandwidth and what we can and cannot do, <laughs> it's kind of like the theme of everything that's happening this year. Uh, we have a lot of cleanup and it's just slow going. So Andrew did come out here and pull some of the weeds and grass around some of these plants just so that they're not competing as hard. But you can see like there's still bed straw on top of this lavender, but he did kind of unbear uncover this uh, lemon thyme plant over here. He also uncovered this, uh, this is a Meyer lemon that we planted here. We had this in pots for a really long time. It was really sickly. And I noticed actually last week that this one is now budding. Looks like there are some ants on it. I don't know what that's about. It's probably not great, but there are also flowers. So I'm just gonna focus on the flowers. And then we have two more citrus trees. This is an orange tree. And then back there is a cutie tree, a clementine. They're both doing pretty well. They are starting to fruit out a little bit. This one doesn't have as much fruit on it as last year, but we're okay with that. It's a healthy tree, so 
that's kind of all we're going for. And then at the base of this tree, I don't know if I ever really show this, we planted some oregano that we brought with us from our old house and it's been pretty happy in this spot. Since the last garden tour, we had a bunch of just like sticks and random branches and stuff piled here just because they were out of the way at the time. But we needed this spot and so I cleared this out and planted, right now we have three tomatillos back here. And I do plan to kind of like tarp this more and put up a cattle panel trellis and plant some tomatoes back here too to really just kind of fill in this, this whole space. I do have a video that I'll link down below of us putting these in and also just doing some other projects too. But uh, you can see that these tomatillos are looking pretty good. They seem fairly happy back here so far. These are starts that we got from a nursery. If you are thinking about growing tomatillos, the one thing that you need to know is that you need to have at least two plants because they need another plant to cross pollinate each other. We made that mistake our first year and we got a beautiful tomatillo plant that never produced any fruit. So learn from our mistake. <laughs> if you get tomatillos, get at least two plants. The other thing we have in the back of our garden here is a little raspberry patch that we started and it flowered let's see if we can get here yeah it flowered and looks like they're drying up and they're starting to produce raspberries we might take all the fruit off of these this year and just let the plants establish but i have to talk to andrew and see what he wants to do about that and then at the edges here i did plant little herbs this one is sorrel french sorrel uh just to kind of like fill in the space more there's a little sage right here and I don't remember what this one was. I don't have a tag for it. Might be a weed, actually. <laughs> uh, but I planted just different herbs on the base of all these, hoping that we could just use the space more and have something growing besides grass back here. You can see at the base of this one, I have, what is this? This is marjoram. There's sage right here. And I think that's another sorrel. Oh, there's a tag right here. Yeah, that's another sorrel right there. They've actually all gotten really big compared to the size they were when I put them in. And then on this one, we have our herbs. There's marjoram, here's, here's a little thyme. Oh, that other one might be thyme also. Here's a little sage. And then this is a, probably an amaranth. And I didn't put this here. This, I think, was in the soil that the compost that we had that we put here. The main part of our garden is raised garden beds. So we have three 4x16s here, three 4x8s, and then three more 4x16s on that side. See the raspberries are right there. On this first bed right here, there's not much going on, and I need to do a lot of reseeding. But we have... oh. This nasturtium is about to open. That's awesome. I've, this is the first year I've successfully grown nasturtium and I've definitely never had one flower before. So I'm excited for that. And then we have little sunflowers and peppers and things like that. These are the peppers that I grew from seed this year and they all stunted really bad. So I put them in here, but we've been also buying bigger peppers from the nursery just to make sure that we get something this year as far as a harvest. And then I have little sunflowers. This definitely should be a lot taller than it is, but I'll take it. And we have more peppers over here. We have a celosia that we got from the nursery. And then I've really been struggling with the things that I start from seed out here and direct so on my cattle panels. Nothing really has come up yet. So I'm gonna come out here and redo these again. There's okra that we put seeds of down this whole bed on the other side and none of those came up either. Now in this middle bed, I think in the last tour we talked about these Kentucky Wonder pole beans and how they were getting eaten and it was just a matter of time. They just needed to get big enough and then they'd be fine. And you can see here that's kind of what's happening. So something is still eating them. It's probably birds pulling at them at this point, but they've gotten a lot bigger and so now they're really starting to take off. And then in the middle of these trellises, I have this kind of like dead zone that I accidentally created. And so last year I put flowers in the middle and I loved that because they kind of peek through and add color in the middle here. So I did that again. And this year I put in, you know, I have straw flowers that were here last year. And then I have sunflowers. Oh, 
This is a tomato right here. So I'm going to see if I want to move that guy. Yeah, I'm going to want to move that because they're going to have a lot of stuff on both sides of these trellises. This year I've had a ton of volunteers in this compost. It's compost that we made ourselves last year and we really did a slow method so it wasn't hot the whole time so a lot of seeds survived. I expected the sunflowers. I didn't expect this many sunflowers and I'll, I love it like I'm obsessed with it but I wasn't expecting to get so many tomatoes and it's kind of a good thing because my tomatoes really didn't do well this year, the ones that I started inside. And so it's been kind of nice to get these extra tomatoes, even though I don't know what variety they are. They're still tomatoes that I know that I wanted last year. And so it's been great to be able to just move those to different spots and to kind of make up for the plants that weren't successful that I started inside. And then in here too, I also put like zinnias and stuff like that, just things that'll grow bigger and kind of like come through the trellises and also be able to kind of hold their own as far as height. And then on this trellis, I had noodle beans. They didn't come up. I reseeded them. A few of them came up. And you can see here, this one, this poor guy's struggle bussing. And so I need to come in here and just put a few more seeds in. And there's another noodle bean right here. Here's a little volunteer sunflower living its life, super happy. In the middle here, I have a yellow squash. That came up the second time I put seeds there. And then we have a bunch of volunteer sunflowers. Uh, we have some little itty bitty peppers that I grew that hopefully do something. Got more sunflowers in with these. These are dragon tongue bush beans. This is the first year I've ever grown them. Oh, they're actually, they're producing beans. That's cool. These purple flowers are really pretty. So as I'm filling in the garden, if I have empty spots, I really like putting bush beans in there just because they grow big, they give you a lot of food, but they're super low maintenance and you can just kind of leave them there until they start producing. And it also helps me kind of like keep the grass at bay a little bit, um, which is a huge problem for me, as you can see, as we walk through the garden, we have Bermuda grass and it just, it took root over the wood chips last year. We didn't get a chance to wood chip again over the winter time this year and it's everywhere. And so that's just one of the battles in my garden. But I do like that if you have empty space, you can still put a plant in there that's producing food or it could be flowers, some, producing something beautiful too. This right here is Kaboka squash. This was the first seed that I direct sowed to come up and it's just so happy and so beautiful. It's, it looks perfect, I love it. And then this one also is a Kaboka squash. So I put two seeds over here and because I didn't know if they would germinate or not and both of them did and so I moved one over here and I didn't know if it would live or not because they don't like being transplanted very much and it also survived which is really great so now we have two and there's another tomato right there I might leave that one because I can support that to the back of this trellis we'll see and then on this trellis I have what is this a butternut yeah, this is a butternut squash. Nothing came up on this side, so I'm gonna replant that, but I'm happy I at least have one. Here's another trellis that needs to be replanted, but on the other side of it, you can see that the sunflowers that, some of these I put in and some of them are volunteers, they're all doing really well. And then we came in here and put a bunch of peppers in too. This one's a pepperoncini and we have dwarf sunflowers here we have other kinds of sunflowers here i had like a mixed pack of them there's also like jalapeno peppers in here so i think that these are some sunflowers that i actually started and planted because i do remember doing kind of like a trifecta in front of this trellis and so at least some of these i put in i think this one because it's so centered is actually one that i put in and it's very happy Last year I got really big beautiful sunflowers, but we had goldfinches that were coming in early in the season and just like destroying the leaves. And so it's really nice to see these this year. The birds haven't really messed with them very much and they're not just like really holy and everything like that. They're full green beautiful leaves, which is really awesome. Mixed in with the sunflowers and the peppers. I think I also probably have some zinnias over here. This one is a amaranth that I think this one might have actually been a volunteer. There's one that I did plant, where is it? The base of that trellis right there. That's another one that I put in, that I know I put in. 
and I've been putting a couple zucchini seeds over here and none of them have come up yet which is like really surprising because usually zucchini is the first thing to come up and I'm doing an experiment now with soaking seeds and then planting them so I'm going to see if that works a little better. Here's another tomato. I have no idea what kind that is. I might leave it. I don't know. <laughs> More sunflowers. I mean look how tall these guys are. They're really happy over here and I'm really happy for them. On this trellis one side didn't come up but what is this oh so this one is another mystery plant i don't know what this is it was a volunteer growing in another space that didn't have a trellis so i moved it over here i didn't know if it would live and uh, so far it is so that's great and what i did with all these is i put blank specifically yellow tags here so that i know where it's a transplant that i move or it's a volunteer that i moved but i don't know what it is and then there's these two sunflowers here this one's massive there were three here and by the time i got around to moving them two of them were kind of too big to move and they were growing growing just you can see really close together so i decided to leave these two and then there's some more volunteer sunflowers over here along with an amaranth that I did put there. Here in the back of the garden, this is what we called our pumpkin patch last year. I'm growing watermelon in it for right now. So I have one little watermelon start here, another one that I think my dog accidentally sat on or something over there. I'm also going to put some pumpkin seeds over here. And so we'll hopefully just have a lot of stuff growing here. And then here we have our potatoes. These are doing so well so happy for them we have healthy potatoes in every single one of the pots they're not flowering yet and so they're not producing potatoes yet but some of these are getting pretty tall i mean this one back here especially and so i think it'll be a couple weeks here because potatoes usually grow pretty fast so this is where we did our cut flower garden experiment last year and i put in a bunch of cut flower starts this year that i grew some of them are making it so you can see right here this is either a zinnia or it might be a snapdragon i can't really tell early on but some of them are making it and doing really well some you know they're still there but they're little and i got a few more cosmos in here so some of them are okay but then we had other spots that were empty and so i came in here and the other day we put in some more Roma tomato starts because we needed more Roma tomatoes for canning and I had the empty space. And then on this side of the bed, we also stuck some peppers in here too, just because I wanted to be able to, to use it. You can see this grass is so intense. Over in this bed, I have some snapdragons that are left over from last year actually, and they're doing really well. They're also a lot taller than last year's snapdragons, so they're healthier just in general. And then I have a few more stragglers from last year here. There's a little nasturtium that I put in here that's pretty happy. And then these are tomatoes that I put in to line this bed. I think I put in the gold nuggets on this side. These are starts that I started myself. And then here's a little um, Cosmo. This is one, oh yeah, this is one that I topped a couple weeks ago. Here's another one of my tomato starts. And these are Mexican sunflowers. I've never grown these before. And these were some of my starts too. They were like probably that big when I put them in here, you could barely see them. And they've really taken off in the last couple weeks. So I'm really happy to have those. And here's another little nasturtium over here. So yeah, everything's just kind of gotten bigger in the last couple weeks which is really exciting but you can see here there's still there's a weed right there but there's still a couple holes that I'm gonna keep coming in and just really making sure this bed is filled out and then in this front bed this is just some stuff that I haven't planted yet that we just got so we got some more tomatoes they look a little rough because we got a lot of rain about two days ago and um, there's some basils here so I got Thai basil and regular like Italian basil Genovese basil and then here, this is a pink calendula. This is a start that I put in. It's the wrong time of year for this, but I wanted to see what it would do anyway. 
just because I, I had the starts and I had the space. And then we had some peppers that we put in here a couple days ago too. I think most of these are just like red bell peppers. You can see the little lime greenish fluffy things. Those are Cosmos. We got more here and we have more tomatoes that we started down here. And there's another one right there. There's some sunflowers. So all of these beds are kind of just a grab bag right now. All right, and then these last three beds, these are the beds that are kind of going through the most transition right now. So you can see in here, because of the rain, some of my snapdragons fell over, which is pretty sad, but they were beautiful while they lasted. We got some actually really healthy kale in here that I planted this either fall or really early spring. And there's some healthy chard over here that's not getting eaten by bugs. These brassicas are taken off. I don't know what's happening in this corner, but they're very happy. It's really strange. Um, I planted some little peppers in here too. You can see over there that's bolted cilantro in that line over there. In with the garlic that is not ready yet. It's getting closer, but we're waiting for the bottom three of these leaves to kind of look shriveled like this one. So it has a, a ways to go. But I got some nasturtiums over here. I have an Armenian cucumber that I transplanted over here. It was really not happy with me and my choices <laughs> for doing that. But then it looks like it's bouncing back now. It's like dark green again. And then on this side of the trellis, I have Kentucky Wonder pole beans that I put down here. They are starting to tendril, so that's a good sign. With the bolted cilantro that's here and here, I have some really healthy brassicas in the middle. Uh, I don't know. I put in some peppers in here. There's another chard over there. So yeah, it's it's just a a mix of coming and comings and goings in this bed. The other thing that I did that's new, I mean you're not gonna see it yet, but I started a pumpkin trellis. So on this trellis here, I soaked seeds and put Jack B. Little pumpkins here. And on the other side, I put baby boo pumpkins there. Across the way here, I put baby boo on this side and Jack B. Little on that side. So the two varieties of pumpkins that I put on this trellis, they're all the like really mini kind of like decorative pumpkins. You can eat them. I specifically got ones that you can eat but they're mostly for decorating let's be honest <laughs> and so what i did is i put um, the jack b littles which are the orange ones across from each other on either side of the trellis and then i put the baby boos which are white ones on either side across from each other on the trellis because i would love for them to grow up and grow together and then just kind of like mix in the middle i also put two seeds on each side of the cattle panel for each one so each each side of the panel has four seeds, so it's two seeds of each variety. Mostly because I want to just make sure that I get something. Uh, that is something that is new for me this year. I usually am like very reserved about putting seeds down because I don't want to waste them and they're very precious to me. But I think with this year and ha just struggling so much with the garden, I have gotten a little more lax <laughs> and generous with the seeds that I put down because I just want something like I don't want the empty spaces and you just lose so much time when you don't have something that fills it up and so yeah I'm gonna see how these plants do I'm gonna see how big they get I've never grown these little itty bitty varieties before the smallest pumpkin that I've grown is a sugar pie actually the only pumpkins I've ever grown are sugar pie pumpkins which are about that big and they grow really well on a trellis. I'm gonna start some of those, or I, I did plant some of those too. And then Howden pumpkins, which are like the carving ones, I grew those for the first time last year. I do have big dreams of hosting like a pumpkin party, a pumpkin patch party at my house. And I don't know if this is the year, <laughs> if this is not the year I'm gonna keep trying until I get it. But this is something that I put a lot of thought into and I'm really excited about it. Down the way from that trellis, we have some different color of calendulas in here, an orange and a yellow. They came in the same pack. And then hidden in here, tucked away, is this beautiful snapdragon. I have just loved this thing. I love the color on this. This like soft, peachy white with the yellow. It's just really pretty. 
And then tucked in here, I have tomato plants. So these are all indeterminate varieties. They're gonna get really, really tall. And they're just kind of in here, hanging out, getting healthy. And basically I wanted them to be ready for when I take these other, there's another one right there. When I take these other plants out, they'll have plenty of space. In this bed, I put in some eggplants and peppers that we got from the nursery. Excited for those to get big. We have this chard that I've just left in here because stuff is eating it and stuff is also eating this eggplant down here. So I'm hoping that if I leave this here for a little bit longer, more things will eat this and less things will eat that eggplant down there. I don't know, it might be different things eating it, but we'll, we will take it out eventually when I need the space, but for right now it's still there. This is the other side of that mini pumpkin trellis. And I do have some calendula like this one, where it's starting to look really rough and I just deadheaded this like two days ago and it still looks rough again and even the leaves are starting to get discolored so I'm going to take this guy out actually and then plant some more things in here but I do have a little pepper there and what is this this looks like a kale yeah I think this is a dazzling blue kale yeah there's a dazzling blue kale we have some volunteer leeks down here I'm sure they're leeks now which is really exciting. A lot of these trellises here are empty because in the last few days I took out the snow peas that were on them. I left a couple of just the healthiest plants, but everything else you can see here I took out and then replanted this trellis. This one has, oh, this one has pumpkins on it. So this is the sugar pie pumpkins that I soaked the seeds. We're gonna try that out and put those there. On the other side over here with this calendula, I do have a dahlia that I put right there. This is my only surviving dahlia from seed. So I have high hopes for it. There's a little Cosmo right there. There's some peppers in here. There's an eggplant right there. So lots of stuff going on. This trellis is newly empty, so I have to replant some stuff on it. And then we have peppers and celosia in the middle of this bed here. There's definitely still room for a lot more things to go in there. And then over here on this trellis, I put in some tomatoes. So these are both super sweet 100 starts that we got from the nursery. And I wanna create a tomato, cherry tomato trellis. So I put those there. I had originally put some tomato starts that I had started and they just didn't do very well. So I replanted this side. And then I also put super sweets on this side. So there's one here. And then there's one mixed in with the sweet alyssum right there. And then I put some basil right there and I'm gonna put some more. We have our more lovely snapdragons. There's some more peppers and eggplants and things down here mixed in with calendula. This one's probably gonna come out soon. And same thing. I mean, most of these are really gonna come out soon. This pea you can see has started to spread <laughs> all over the place and it is pretty far out from the trellis now. It's taken over most of the walkway now. The trellis is back there, and you can just see how much this thing is leaning out now. It's really just, most of these leaves are trellised onto themselves and not attached to the actual support anymore. Here's the other side of that. So yeah, these are still producing really well and I'll leave them for a little bit longer here, but they're also on their way out. This calendula fell over in the rain, so it's definitely gonna come out in the next day or so here. Look at this pansy. This thing is beautiful. I definitely wanna keep trying with pansies because I love when they get big like this. This was such an itty bitty plant when I put it in. And look at it now. Here's something I always forget to show in our tours. This is our lime tree and it's flowering too. This is one that we brought over in a pot. It looked really, really bad. Even at the beginning of this year, it looked really, really bad, but it has gotten really green and beautiful and now it's flowering, which is really awesome. This trellis I feel like has had the most transition out of anything between the tours. So I planted this with Romas that I started and a lot of them died. So then a couple weeks after that, I put in transplants. You see this one doesn't have a name on it. 
This was a random one that I found in one of the other beds. And some of them survived, some of them died. This one isn't looking too hot here. And then we came in and filled in the holes of the, the transplants that didn't make it with nursery plants. This one, I have no idea what it is. It could be a bush variety. It could be indeterminate and get really tall. I have no idea. Uh, here's another Roma. I think this one, oh yeah, this one is another miscellaneous. And then we got another Roma here on the end. So it's all a grab bag. We'll get tomatoes. <laughs> That's the one thing I know for sure is they're all tomatoes. Here is one of our apple trees. This one is a Honeycrisp. This is the our late bloomer tree. So it's the last one to still be flowering. And it's really beautiful. You can see some of the flowers are, are done. So hopefully we'll get some fruit here. This one is our gala and it already flowered, and, but I don't see any fruit on it. I'm not particularly worried about that. I just, I'm curious about it. And then this is our other honey crisp. This one was the first one to flower. And on this one, we did see fruit. Let me see if I can find. So here behind this flower, you can see the little bulge back there. I think that's an apple. If we do get fruit off of any of these apple trees, it'll be the first time we're getting apples. So no matter what, it's pretty exciting. And then finally we have our blueberries. There's fruit you can see at the base of this one. They've been doing pretty well. We've been coming out here and just trying to clear all of the grass and weeds away from them. And then we'll come out here and be able to clean up with the weed whacker and stuff. But you can see, I think I just, <laughs> I think I just accidentally kicked off a, ber a berry here. Um, but you can see they're doing pretty well. I mean, there's fruit on them. We have a total of six. There's five that we can see, and the other one is buried in the weeds in the back. So I don't know. We'll, we're going to try and get it. And we took all the fruit off of these last year. So this will be the first year that we're actually getting berries. So that's it for the garden tour today. As always, I would love to know what you're growing in your garden, whether it's raised beds like these, a full on like food forest permaculture garden or pots on a patio. I'd love to hear all about it. I get super excited when you guys tell me how your things are growing. And I love that we get to grow things together. I just think it's super fun. So thank you so much for taking time to hang out with me and go through and just see all of the beautiful and not so beautiful <laughs> things in my garden and yeah i appreciate that you're here and i hope to see you next time until then have a great day and i'll see you later bye